two things can be true. It can be true that Megan is a weird narcissist who seems like she's in a toxic relationship with this man. And both of them have got some bad dynamics going on, but there's something kind of like extra heinous about her. She just seems very inauthentic. So that can be true. And what she has said about his family can also be true. Maybe not the extent of the victim narrative that she's claiming, but there's something, you know, in what she's talking about and that they are expected to accept being treated as pawns, as children, and that, you know, the system that Harry's coming from is very toxic for his authentic self. Okay. However, is it the job of Megan the savior to come in and rescue a grown man from his toxic family? No. And this always turns out very badly. I'm going to link a video here where I talk about how I had this weird dynamic where I would always get involved with fundamentalist Christians who wanted me to rescue them, rescue them from their mean families. Right? They saw me as somebody who, you know, had liberated myself from uh, the court of public opinion, from trying to please my parents, uh, who couldn't care less about me <laughs> to begin with. Do you know what I mean? And I try to get these people to understand that they didn't get it. They're just like, yeah, you have freedom, and that looks great. Um, and it always turned out badly. It always backfired on me. You know, um, I had a, my longest relationship was like this. It was with a guy who was um, under financial control by his, uh, his fundamentalist Christian mother. And he really wanted to rebel against her. But every time he took like the most minor step, she'd turn around and be like, oh, I'm so very sorry that I have completely destroyed and ruined your life. I'll definitely stop giving you money so you won't have to. Right, right, right. right. It turns into this, this passive aggressive game. Like, oh, I'm so sorry that me giving you money every month and giving you a place to stay has caused you so much trauma. I should definitely stop doing that. Right. It's not, you know what I mean? It's like a threat. It was really terrible to witness this. And this is how, you know, these fundamentalist Christian uh, parents are. They think they are God. They think their children are their own property that they can manipulate. They think their children are a projection of themselves. And oftentimes, and I'm not sure what it is, you know, it could be the fact that it takes a certain mind to actually get out of that religious indoctrination. But these people, when they become adults, if once they kind of start to break out of the religion, they're people who I find very compelling. You know, you can have deep conversations with them. They usually were raised in a wholesome way. Like, this is the thing I, I really struggle with is like, you know, people who are raised in a secular, you know, typical American or Canadian household, they're just exposed to a lot of things that change their personality, you know, from culture. Um, that just really do not appeal to me. You know, the TV shows they watch, the movies, the jokes, just whatever it is, the culture is just gross to me. I, 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 it's repulsive. And these people, most of the time, they weren't raised with that. So they become very appealing to me, but this dynamic always kind of comes up where it's like, my mom and my dad, they're so controlling and this and that. And, you know, and I'm like, well, we should do this, we should do that. You know, I remember in my long-term relationship, I remember my partner, he was like, oh, I just know I have to go spend, we have to spend so much time with my parents at Christmas. I don't want to do it. And of course we did like doing it because like she was very wealthy. She would buy us like lots of stuff. Like his, he'd be like, give, give, give my mom like a list of like what you want for Christmas. And I'd put like, you know, Mac cosmetics, you know, like, I don't know, cell phone case. And he's like, put some big items on there because she likes those too. So I'd be like, okay, iPad, Canon Rebel, Ugg boots. And like, I would get some of it. Like I'd get like a bunch of this stuff, right? Um, but, you know, we also kind of liked feeling like eh, Christmas, you know, like it's not such a big deal. I loved getting presents for his family and wrapping them really nice. And he would <laughs> have a huge smile on his face to walk in the door holding them, you know, he liked, you know, so it was really cute. But um yeah, there were some times where like, I do not want to spend more time with my family. So I was like, yeah, let's go to Mexico. And the fact that we did that that year was actually what enabled me to be able to get this COVID visa so I could be in Mexico during this time, which is absolutely crazy to me how that worked out. 
Um, but yeah, I, and you know, when I was in that video, you'll hear me telling more stories of these, even a, a girl, you know, I was friends with, she's like, my dad is so mean and controlling. I'm like, let's move out together. And what happened? The dad shows up and she left with him, leaving me on the hook. So I, I would tell any woman, anytime you notice that you start to feel like protective or defensive over a man, you need to get yourself out of there. And also you are being inappropriate right? You are not God. You are not um, some controlling force in this man's life. You are not a psychotherapist. You are not a family counselor. You are not, you know, so when, when you see the, and even if you are, by the way, (laughs) because I'm like of the age now, or like I have a bunch of friends who actually are these things. (laughs) Even if you are those things, you have not been contracted to do the work for them. It's unethical. Don't do it. And yeah, so anytime you're like noticing these things or whatever, um, it needs to be about you, right? These men who come in, hey, I need rescuing from my mommy. The second you rescue him from your mommy, guess who you become in his eyes? The mommy. And guess what you get to deal with? All of the emotions. He was too scared to ever bring up to his actual mother, who's the one who deserves them, right? She's the one who raised him to be the, you know, the, the, the replacement for her father, for his father emotionally. She's the one who raised him to see her as a god, to fulfill her emotional desires, to completely, you know, put aside any sense of his own sense of will or desires or personality to become this automaton that she wanted, who did everything perfectly to make her happy so she could feel comfortable under the guise of, I'm doing what's best for you. And now you get to deal with the fallout. Oh yes, you're going to have a man who, uh, who's going to look at you and his eyes will turn black. You're going to have a man who you're supposed to be going out together to do tractors early in the morning and you're getting everything ready and he'll sit on the couch playing on his phone, which is something you would never think this man would ever do. Like he's a farm kid. He's like, you know, he was like really attentive and stuff before, but it's like these little passive aggressive things that start happening. And so you ignore it the first couple of times. And the next time he does it, you go there and you ask, you actually, what happened is I walked out. I'm like, what is he doing on the phone? And I was like, oh, and I sighed and I walked off and he comes running after me going, do you need help? Do you need help? And that's when I'm like, all right. I mean, there were many moments where I was like, what the hell is this that I am dealing with? Like, okay, so now I got a mean 16 year old on my hands. Cool. Like, you know, I'm not doing this, right? So anytime as a woman, you catch yourself feeling protective or defensive of a man, that's not an opportunity for you to stand up. Like for me, I was just so upset. Like I was I was like, man, he's such an amazing person. How can his parents not see that? How dare they try to put religion on him instead of hearing what he has to say or whatever. But you know what's really funny? In my doing that, in my being outraged that his parents weren't seeing him for who he was, I wasn't seeing him for who he was either. I was projecting my fantasy onto him, which I guised as potential. You know, I just see so much potential in him and I believe in him. I was doing the same thing on a different level. You know, of course, I was also, you know, interested in personally knowing him and the things he was into and what he thought and whatever. So it was, yeah, a a good number of levels up from his parents' behavior but underlying that, it was still the same kind of thing. Like, I need to ignore this absolutely insane and immature side of you in order to convince myself that this is going to become something that will fill my needs, right? And realistically, this is something that people do in all relationships. Yes, we don't get into relationships solely out of the goodness of our hearts. Even if it feels like that, it's because we're getting something out of it. For example, I clean up my cat after she goes to the bathroom. I buy her stuff. I take care of her. I pay for her and she lives here for free and relaxes. You might be like, wow, Adele, that's very selfless. Well, not really. I've projected my inner child onto this cat. (laughs) I feel like by caring, you know, I I feel so defensive and so protective of this cat. You know, I saw this meme the other day that said, um, 
people care for their pets the way they wish they would have been treated as a child. And that really struck me because one thing, I, I like making up these narratives about my cats and talking about them. And I repeat them over and over again. Some people say things like, he's the cutest cat in the world. Well, one thing I always say is, Maurice might be small, but she's a person too. And everyone must respect her. This is what I say over and over and over again, you know? Um, so it's like really, really cute, you know? And I just feel like I get to speak for her and I feel like she's there going, yeah, you know? <laughs> But I mean, that's me and that's my inner child, you know, I mean, and yes, it's benefiting this cat. So that's, you know, a symbiotic relationship when each person is like meeting their own needs for themselves through the other person. And by doing so, it benefits them, right? If it's like this uneven thing, or if there's some weird abuse going on, or if there's like, a person who's ignoring red flags or whatever, then it just doesn't work. So this is my video for any woman who feel the need to protect or defend a man, even if it's from his ex, never defend a man against his ex, believe and listen to his ex. She might be crazy. There are some like absolutely crazy ones out there, but there is some real, you know, valuable knowledge. Use your judgment. Look at this woman. Look at the way she presents herself and ask yourself, would she just lie for no reason? Right? And and trust your inner feelings, your inner judgment, you know. With my ex-husband, <laughs> my first impression when I opened the door and I saw him for the first time was, there's something wrong here and I should leave. That was my first impression, okay? And you know that's not, that. and I remember asking myself, you know, why did I come here? I should just leave. And then I was like, no, 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 you know, it's the loneliness. And we did legitimately have this, this connection that was very comforting because of the um, desert of, you know, anyone, trying to really get to know our inner world that like we really shared that with each other and we really supported each other in that um yeah and also just flat out loneliness and it wasn't like yeah so it was a really difficult situation that we both got ourselves into anyway i hope this helped leave any thoughts or comments below and enjoy your day